Hello everybody, today I'll be showing you how to write a program to reduce radicals in your TI-84-83 graphing calculator. So to get started, uh, create a new program. I named mine Red Rad, Reduce Radicals. Alright, and uh, so go ahead and do that. And uh, next, to start off here, uh, same as always here, we're going to clear the home screen. So go ahead and clear the home screen, get all that clutter away. Uh, next, we want to initialize a variable k, uh, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, that's k, and we're going to use that. So uh, just initialize it for now. I'll <laughs> explain it more later. Uh, initialize it to zero, and we're going to now want to prompt for our determinant, what uh, the number under the radical that we want to uh, reduce. So prompt d, determinant d. Alright, and uh, next we're going to want to open up a couple loops here. It might not make sense at first, but uh, just uh, stay with me. This is the simplest method I know of, but uh, there may be others out here, but uh, this is how I like to do it. Alright, so, first loop, for loop, uh, first counter i, and we're going to go, this loop is going to go five times. So, one to five. And then the next one, I'm going to open up another one inside this for loop. All right, we're inside it. So this loop itself is going to be uh, called five times. All right, and this one, count, uh, counting variable j. And this one, we're going to go from 2 to 10. Now, why 2 to 10? Because these are the uh, numbers that we're going to want to try, test to see if we can take them out. You, this is what you probably do when you uh, try and reduce a radical yourself. You're going to see. Oh, uh, is two squared go into it? Does three squared go into it? Does four squared go into it? And that's what we're gonna do. All right. So now let's add that test. So to do that, the uh, way you test to see if something is divisible by another number is as follows. So go ahead and if, and then if not, which uh, not is under test, the second math over to logic. If not, this uh, basically inverts the uh, its argument. So if not uh, f part, f part is found under math or number f part. So f part is the fraction part. Now there are two parts to uh, numbers in uh, this. There's the i part, the integer part, and then there's the f part, the fraction part. So i is the whole number part and f is the fraction part, the decimal part. So basically uh, uh, for the argument of this well, let's just do that to explain it, um, is going to be d, our determinant, divided by uh, our j, our count, in this uh, second loop here, divided by j squared, because we want to take out the squares of these numbers. All right, so j squared, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then, uh, and then. <laughs> All right, so basically what this is saying is, if there is not a fraction part to this division right here, if this does not have a fraction part, meaning that it's there's just an integer part, then, uh, well, basically that means that these two numbers go into each other, or this number goes into it evenly. J goes in, J squared goes evenly into D, so that means that we can take it out successfully. All right. So if not fraction part, D divided by J squared. All right. That's how. That's how that works. All right, and um, if that's successful, then we want to do a couple of things. Well, first we want to actually do that division and take j squared out of d. All right, so first thing, d divided by j squared, and store that as d. And then we want to we want to keep track of what we're taking out, and that's what our k is for. All right, so take our k and add it to what we just took out. But remember. You, when you take out the square, you, you add the square root of it. All right. So since we, we took out j squared, we divided d by j squared. So that means we're going to add just j to k. All right. So store that as k. And then that is all in the test. So we can end that. And then we also want to end all of our loops here. All right. Now you're probably wondering what's this uh, first loop here for. Well, 
we want to make sure that sometimes you can take out four twice or four three times depending on how large your number is so we want to make sure that we take them all out and uh, usually you're probably not this might be excessive in itself but uh, you know you're probably not going to use more uh, than you're not going to need more than this number of iterations to reduce it unless you're using a really large uh, determinant which you know I don't know why you're doing that you know what, what are you doing with your life if you have that large of a determinant but anyways alright so uh, next just a quick test just in case we didn't take anything out of D alright uh, our K is our K value was initialized to zero so it's gonna return zero so we just wanna make sure that we're not displaying zero because you know that would make much sense so let's go ahead and check here to see if K is still zero so if K is still zero, then we're going to want to set it to one because uh, you know the identity property of multiplication, or whatever the heck that that property is. But if you multiply any number by one, it, it returns itself. All right, so one stores k. Do that. End. All right, and then uh, we can go ahead and display. Uh, our answer. All right, so let's uh, remind the user, not like that. Remind the user uh, of the format of our answer, which is where uh, k. No, that's not k. Where k radical. Uh, it's not the radical. Radical. Radical, there we are. Radical D. That's the format of our answer. And now, uh, let's see, close that. And close that. Um, now you could, you know, do this all fancy with, uh, you know, display K and then your radical sign and then your D. But it's not exactly the easiest thing to get the spacing right. Um, you can go ahead and try it with uh, using output command. But it, uh, trust me, it's not really worth it. Uh, you're better off just doing it this way and displaying your two variables like this, k, k equals uh, an equal sign in there, just for show, uh, k equals k, and then we want to display d, our new d value, d equals close D. All right, and that's that. So that's just gonna, you know, fairly simple output there. But uh, you know, make it fancy. It's not really worth it for such a simple task, such as reducing a radical. Making a fancy output really isn't that necessary, unless you want to. I mean, if you want to have some fun with that, go ahead, knock yourself out. But so, just for the hell of it, stop. Even though it's gonna stop anyway. Add that in there, just. Uh, you know, I don't know. Good practice to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and test our program here. So go ahead, run your program. Uh, D. Let's throw in 153. Three radical 17. Oh, now does that equal that? Well, uh, yes, it does. But I'll humor you. Three radical 17. Does it equal radical 153? Let's find out. One, one, one means true in the coding world. Zero means false. So if it returns zero, it would be false. But since it returned one, that means it's true, and that means our program is right. But you don't believe me? Let's try it again, just in case you know 150 was a lucky number. Let's try 56. Two radical 14. Again, I know that works. You can test it if you don't believe me. Don't be so cynical. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, give me a like or a comment or whatever. If you have any questions, uh, message me. Whatever. I don't know what you, ever you YouTubers do. So uh, thanks for watching.